Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my, whoops, my name is Jennifer Cook. I'm director of the Africa program here at the Center for Strategic and International Studies. Uh, we're delighted to welcome you to today's event, uh, the road to presidential elections in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Um, this is a big year for elections in Africa with more than 15 presidential elections uh, in 2011. I think while the, the electoral standoff in Cote d'Ivoire, the Sudanese referendum, turmoil in Egypt have, have taken a lot of uh, attention already and are, are, are kind of um, a dominating Africa-centered interest, I think uh, it'll be very important in the coming months to focus on the uh, elections in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Uh, as you know, this is a country of, of vast potential and, and promise, but also one that's been racked by conflict and crisis for, for decades. Uh, recently, um, uh, I think in a positive development, a lot more attention has been spent on the crisis in the East, but I think less on the fundamental issues that in underpin that crisis. Uh, the, the issues of governance, which really very much are determined to a large extent uh, within Kinshasa. Um, so these elections coming up are ones that I think the United deserve our scrutiny, our attention, and our support. Um, uh, we hope in the course of the coming months here at CSIS to uh, host a series of events focused on the elections, the critical questions, and, and how best the United States and international community um, can support free, transparent, and credible elections. I think, uh, as you know, there, there are troubling signs, perhaps already, the constitutional amendment uh, that, uh, that eliminates a, a, a runoff election between uh, presidential contestants um, is uh, kind of a, something of an ominous sign, I think. Uh, it will be incumbent on the opposition, uh, given those circumstances, uh, to have a strategy in place. And for that reason, we're very happy to host today uh, Vital Camere, uh, who is uh, the president and co-founder of the Union pour la Nation Congolaise, the UNC party. Uh, he, um, as you know, he's a former member of parliament, uh, he, representing the Bukavu district uh, of Kivu. Um, and as many of you know, he was one time a, a close ally of President Kabila. Uh, he served as Secretary General of the Ruling People's Party for Reconstruction and Development, the uh, PPRD. Uh, it was a leader of President Kabila's uh, election campaign and held a number of government positions. Uh, most recently, he was President of the National Assembly, uh, a post from which he resigned in March 2009 after a very public falling out with President Kabila over Rwanda's uh, involvement in Eastern DRC and perhaps more specifically, the role of the legislature and the powers vested in the, in the legislature to, um, to be informed and to oversee. Uh, so Mr. Kamari has been a key figure, both in successive peace processes uh, on the East and in the inter-Congolese uh, political dialogue. Uh, he is today considered among the leading opposition candidates uh, for president in the run-up to the November 2011 um, elections. Uh, so we're delighted to have you here with us. Uh, he's joined today by uh, Tadi Wantwadi, who's the personal representative of Mr. Kamari in the U.S. Uh, he'll be translating for Mr. Kamari. Uh, and also on the panel, we have Mvemba Dizolele, who is a distinguished visiting fellow with the Hoover, Hoover Institution of uh, Stanford uh, University. Mvemba is a writer, foreign policy analyst, and independent journalist. He's written extensively on Congo. Uh, he's currently a visiting scholar at the Johns Hopkins School of Advanced International Studies, and he's the author of a forthcoming, uh, we're, we're looking forward to seeing this too, the forthcoming <laughs> biography, it's been forthcoming for a while, uh, Mobutu, The Rise of Fall of the Leopard Kings. Um, I just want to say a note, I, I know many people have traveled to this event uh, from far away. Uh, there's a great deal of passion surrounding the issues in uh, Congo. They say this about Kenyans and Nigerians, but Congolese, you have three Congolese in a room and you've got four different opinions right there. People are very impassioned, I think people are very frustrated what's, 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 what's happened in the Congo over time. So I know there'll be a lot of discussion, we've gotten a lot of emails in the run up to this event. I, I do hope you know, again, this is one of a series that we'll be having on, on the Democratic Republic of Congo's, the election course. 
Uh, we, 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 we do want this to remain kind of a civil, it's not a political rally, this is analysis and discussion, um, and we hope uh, we, we all maintain a, the, the tone and the, keep that spirit in mind. Um, we're going to turn to Mr. Kameri first for remarks and then to Mbemba, and we're going to reserve as much time for, as possible for um, a question uh, period. So with that, Mr. Kameri, welcome. Um, we're delighted to host you here, um, and we look forward to your remarks. Je tiens tout d'abord à remercier le Centre d'études internationales stratégiques internationales de Washington pour l'invitation qui m'a été lancée. I'd like, first of all, to thank uh, the Center for Strategic and International Studies for the invitations that uh, I have received. Si l'invitation que j'ai reçue, on m'a demandé de parler de la situation politique en République démocratique du Congo et de ma propre candidature. On my invitation, they asked me to speak about the political situation in the DRC, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, and about also my, can my candidacy as the, uh, the presidential elections of uh, 2011. Cela m'amène tout naturellement à parler des pouvoirs, des pouvoirs actuels face au processus électoral dans notre pays, puisque c'est ça l'actualité. Therefore, that takes me to speak about uh, the political power right now, and uh, of course, uh, facing up uh, the opposition. Et, non, c'est-à-dire la position du pouvoir actuel par rapport au processus électoral, toutes les gesticulations, tous les faits qui sont posés, on va les passer au crible et essayer de les interpréter. The, the actual power versus facing up the electoral process right now, which will be a diagonist. Uh, Nous allons aussi parler de l'attitude de l'opposition politique congolaise face à ce même processus électoral. We also be speaking about the attitude of the Congolese uh, opposition vis-à-vis uh, -vis of this uh, electoral process. La société civile aussi a donné de la voix. Uh, the uh, civil society also has got some voices. Nous allons parler aussi de l'attitude de la communauté internationale. We also be speaking about the international uh, community uh, uh, attitude. Comme il est très difficile de parler de soi-même, naturellement, nous terminerons par nous-mêmes et nous serons très brefs et nous laisserons aux autres les soins de peindre notre uh, portrait. Since it's hard to speak for oneself, we will uh, uh, finalize our uh, uh, speech with that and then we'll leave it to others to go ahead and uh, just to paint whatever they could see out of me. Concernant la position du pouvoir actuel face au processus électoral dans notre pays, je voudrais retenir euh, quelques points saillants. Le premier point, c'est la révision de la constitution dans notre pays. Le deuxième point, c'est la modification projetée de la loi électorale. Le troisième point, c'est le musulman de l'opposition et de la société civile. Et le quatrième point, c'est la politisation de l'armée, de la police et des services de sécurité, enfin, la manipulation de l'institution chargée des élections dans notre pays. Uh, about uh, the power, actually, uh, the government attitude uh, towards this process, first of all, I will be speaking about uh, the review uh, or the amendment that they want to bring about the Constitution, uh, the modification on the electoral law, and, of course, the attack on the, the opposition and the, the fourth one, uh, the quatrième question, pourquoi? La, le, 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 no, disons, la... Après le musulman de l'opposition. La politisation de l'armée. Politisation of the army. Et la manipulation de la commission électorale. And the, the manipulation of the electoral committee. La modification de la constitution qui est intervenue a surpris beaucoup de gens. D'abord, le moment où cette modification est intervenue. Et secondo, la manière dont elle est intervenue. The review of the Constitution surprised a lot of people. First of all, about the timing of it, and then the second thing is how it happened. Beaucoup de gens se posent la question de savoir pourquoi ça se passe au mois de janvier, à la fin du mandat, et pendant le processus même électoral, au moment où les opérations électorales ont commencé. Many are questioning why this is happening in uh, January at this time, and at the moment that uh, the electoral process has also to begin. On dit qu'on ne change pas les règles du jeu en pleine compétition, mais là, les règles du jeu ont changé en pleine compétition. They say you don't change the rules of the game during the competition. 
However, here we've noticed that uh, the rules are being changed during the competition. L'explication est simple. Au début, le pouvoir dans ces officines avait l'impression d'avoir une voie royale complètement ouverte devant lui, c'est-à-dire il n'y avait pas d'opposant. À partir du moment où le pouvoir avait réussi, à, avec la complicité de beaucoup de gens, de mettre Jean-Pierre Bemba hors course, c'est-à-dire le mettre à la CPI, pour l'opposition, pour le pouvoir, la voie de la victoire était assurée. Uh, certainly, it's uh, quite simple uh, because uh, it, uh, uh, at one time, the power, those in power, felt that. Uh, uh, Jean-Pierre Bemba à la CPI qui était le challenger de Kabila, il avait 42%. Uh, Jean-Pierre Bemba, who was the challenger of Kabila, had 42%. Right now, he's at the uh, CPI. Et pour le pouvoir, donc, la victoire était assurée. For the power, the victory was assured. Mais le retour, parce qu'il était déjà donné pour mort. Il y en a qui étaient contents. Etienne Tshisekedi, il est malade et c'est fini. On ne va plus parler de lui. Many believe that uh, it was all over. He was dead because he's in jail and Tshisekedi is too old and that's it. It's all over. Mais le retour du vieux opposant congolais, Etienne Tshisekedi, l'accueil qu'il a reçu de l'aéroport d'Ndjili jusque chez lui à la maison, je crois que c'était le premier signal fort qui a réveillé le pouvoir en place. However, the return of Tshisekedi back to Kinshasa and the welcome that he received shook up the power in Kinshasa and uh, brought up the attention of those that are ruling, the ruling class today. Quand nous-mêmes nous avons tenu notre conférence le 14 décembre où nous avons annoncé notre décision de quitter le PPRD, le parti présidentiel, en même temps à remettre les sièges que nous occupions au nom de ce parti à l'Assemblée nationale et annoncer en même temps nos ambitions de nous présenter à la présidentielle de 2011, suivi de notre sortie à Goma et à Bukavu, où nous avons été accueillis par notre population. Je crois que c'est le deuxième élément qui a finalement convaincu le pouvoir qu'il fallait compter avec une certaine opposition en face dans les élections qui se préparaient. As far as we're concerned, concerning ourselves, the UNC, as, uh, in, uh, based on our uh, meeting of uh, December uh, 14, uh, about uh, our own resignation from the parliament and uh, about uh, uh, the, the trip that we took within the country, and uh, that just about start bringing up to them that something may be happening because of what a movement has been becoming. Alors, le président de la République a décidé qu'on puisse revoir la Constitution parce qu'il est convaincu qu'en bougeant du côté de la Constitution, en changeant les modes de scrutin, passer des modes de scrutin à deux tours, à un tour majoritaire, il peut, face à une opposition désorganisée, s'assurer de gagner. Et donc, il a instruit l'Assemblée nationale de modifier la Constitution. Cette question n'était pas inscrite à l'ordre du jour du Sénat, alors que la loi le demande ainsi. Mais on a fait un passage en force et la Constitution a été modifiée. Donc aujourd'hui, malgré toutes les contestations, le président a promulgué la Constitution révisée. I have to summarize that. Uh, <laughs> uh, as soon as the, the president realized what's happening, first of all, we have to talk about Mr. Chisekedi coming back and whatever we just said. And secondly, about the position of UNC. Uh, he realized that it's time to review and, and modify the constitutions because that's what really could probably give him uh, an opportunity. Therefore, it was important for them to do away with uh, the second round for the elections. C'est-à-dire, nous avons un tour et le président est le seul candidat autoproclamé du pouvoir, parce que là-bas, semble-t-il, c'est la discipline, on peut appeler ça autrement. Et de l'autre côté, c'est-à-dire dans notre camp de l'opposition, il compte sur le fait qu'il y aura multiplicité de candidatures. Donc, en comptant sur l'émiettement des voix et couplé de la corruption et de la manipulation des urnes, il est sûr de gagner. When he looked at him, he saw that the first round, he could take an advantage on that because he's alone to go there. And uh, knowing that uh, the, the opposition is seriously divided in pieces and pieces, therefore going that way will give him an opportunity to get more voices. La réaction de l'opposition ne s'est pas fait attendre pour la première fois. C'est pourquoi on dit à quelque chose malheureux bon. 
puisque cette attitude du pouvoir a permis à l'opposition d'avoir un instinct de survie. Pour la première fois, nous avons eu un communiqué conjoint parlant d'une seule voix et disant non à la révision constitutionnelle. Well, the opposition didn't wait too long and they realized it. Uh, sometimes we say well, when, when you have something wrong, it could always bring some goodness out of it. Therefore, because of all these uh, uh, moving around the positions of the power, for the first time, the opposition came together, uh, came up to find out an agreement to see how they could move forward effectively to go against uh, the, the position that is being taken by the ruling class. In campagne médiatique a commencé à la télévision pour prévenir l'opposition, pour dire attention, Caméré n'est pas opposant. Nous l'envoyons chez vous comme espion pour vous désorganiser. Well, in the media, they started a campaign saying that be careful, Caméré is not in opposition. We are sending him to come in and effectively, uh, on behalf of us, the power to uh, disturb uh, the opposition. Ça n'a pas découragé l'opposition puisque nous sommes passés à la deuxième étape et ensemble nous sommes allés hausser les tons au niveau de la mission des Nations Unies pour dire la tiédeur de la communauté internationale qui avait pourtant soutenu et garanti l'accord global inclusif qui avait mis fin entre guillemets à la guerre et nous nous attendions à ce qu'il puisse hausser les tons. Et donc nous sommes partis encore l'IDPS, le MLC, nous tous ensemble pour dire non et que nous n'étions pas contents de la réaction de la communauté internationale timide ou absente. Well, this didn't uh, at all discourage uh, the opposition. We stood up and all together went to the United Nations uh, uh, presence in the Congo and uh, took a position on that uh, because we understood that this is uh, to discourage the opposition. Therefore, shaking up the international community to come up to their responsibilities because we felt that there were some uh, weaknesses or uh, some uh, type of uh, uh, not heat on, on, on behalf of the international community. Remarquant cela, le pouvoir a dit la victoire n'est pas encore assurée. Donc il faut passer à autre chose. Il faut modifier la loi électorale. Uh, when they noticed that, they said, well, we're not sure about the victory, so we have to do something else. So that means we have to go ahead and modify the electoral uh, laws. Heureusement que le Parlement est en congé. Fortunately, the Parliament was in recess. Mais sinon, on aurait déjà liquidé ça à, à une heure. But otherwise, they would have just changed the constitution within an hour. Qu'est-ce que l'on vise? C'est une loi taillée sur mesure. C'est-à-dire, on prend M. Vemba, on amène un tailleur, on lui fait un costume qui lui va à lui, M. Vemba. What is the objective? What is it on a target? It's just like taking a decision as when you take a suit, you measure it, we take the case of Mr. Mvemba, and that suit only fits Mr. Mvemba. Donc on voudrait absolument, par tous les moyens, éliminer M. Tien Tshisekedi. Parce qu'on veut fixer la limitation de l'âge à 70 ans. Ce qui est tout à fait de l'immoralité. What are they trying to uh, uh, obtain as objective? First of all, is to just get rid of Mr. Chisakedi because they're trying to modify the law, bringing the age of uh, presidential candidates to 70, down to 70, because Mr. Chisakedi is over 70, and that is an immoral act. Nous disons que c'est de l'immoralité parce que je suis mieux placé que quiconque pour dire combien nous, à l'époque où j'étais à côté du président Kabila, nous avions souffert à l'époque pour amener l'âge de 40 ans à 30 ans pour permettre au président Kabila qui n'avait pas l'âge requis. <laughs> d'être élu. Maintenant que cette loi lui a servi à lui d'être candidat, c'est comme un arbre sur lequel on est assis, on le coupe, ou bien l'escalier qui vous a permis de monter, vous laissez tomber l'escalier. Mais pensez au retour, puisque vous devez redescendre un jour. Well, it is effectively for me to believe that is immorality. Can you imagine when we were in power, we brought down the age from 40 to 30, 30, uh, 30. to 30. Il faut and, dire que j'étais à côté de Kabila and, et j'assume ça. And I assume I was next to him, we did it. We On, brought the age from 40 down to 30 to make sure that nous Mr. Avons souffert. we suffered. We, uh, that Mr. Kabila could pass on through so his candidacy could be accepted when we lowered the age. 
So what does it mean? Right now things are changing. That's just like, uh, I mean, knocking down the brains on which you are sitting on a tree. Et là, c'est Jean-Pierre Bemba qui avait dit, bon, écoutez, nous n'allons pas discuter pendant longtemps. Nous sommes sûrs que les Congolais vont faire le bon choix. Ok, si c'est pour la réconciliation nationale, si c'est pour la paix, on peut abaisser à 30 ans. And it was Jean-Pierre Bemba who said, listen, uh, that's okay, we could go ahead and deal with it. They are the Congolese people, we understand. If it is for the peace, nevertheless, let's go ahead and bring the age to the age of 30. Simple as that. La deuxième chose que le pouvoir vise, c'est de fixer dans cette loi un critère qui va éliminer M. Kamere, tout de suite et maintenant. The second uh, target for those in power is to fix up some criteria that will necessarily get rid of uh, Mr. Kamere. Il est dit dans ce projet de loi que les partis, tout parti politique qui n'a pas une existence d'au moins de 5 ans ne peut pas présenter un candidat. On that law, it will say that any political party that has not been around for over five years cannot go ahead to the election, to the presidential election. De quoi a-t-on peur? What are they afraid of? Alors, nous disons que nous n'avons pas beaucoup de temps, mais nous voulons aussi relever que l'attitude du pouvoir, c'est aussi la manipulation de l'institution chargée des opérations préélectorales et électorales. What could we say? We really don't have much time. However, we can understand that the, the purpose of the power is to manipulate uh, the laws, the pre-electoral laws, that within this time that are uh, set for the elections. Il ne faut pas que le peuple congolais, il ne faut pas non plus que la communauté internationale attende que nous en arrivions à la situation de l'Égypte, ou alors que nous connaissions un raccourci du genre Niger, pour commencer à réagir par des voies de communiquer ou des envoyer des ambassadeurs. Alors qu'il y a moyen de prévenir. Moi, je suis pour la prévention, je suis pour les vaccins. Vaccinons le pouvoir en place de cette maladie qui le hante et qui le pousse à tout bousculer, à tout détruire que nous avons réussi à construire après, après discussion et négociation à, à San City. Well, we don't have to wait. Uh, and then get into the situation such as what is going on in, in, in Egypt and what happened in uh, Niger. Uh, it is, as far as I'm concerned, I believe in preventing. And therefore, vaccinating something is much more better to prevent than wait for it to happen. Et nous disons, au niveau de la manipulation, qu'est-ce qui se passe? Tout le monde est en train de suivre l'enrôlement. On a diminué les bureaux de vote dans certains endroits sans explication valable. Tout simplement parce qu'on estime que de ce côté-là, la population est plus ou moins hostile au président de la République. Et là où on pense qu'il peut y avoir beaucoup de, de voix, on multiplie les bureaux de vote. Décourager notre population, faire 40 km pour aller s'enrôler, on comprend très bien l'objectif poursuivi. What is it? You know, the purpose is that uh, reducing offices, enrollment, uh, enrolling offices for elections, where they know that there is a lot of opposition and increasing the numbers of uh, voting offices where they know uh, that uh, the power has more population. That pushing our people to travel distances such as 40 kilometers to just go and vote. Et je vais revenir sur cette question puisqu'il y a beaucoup à dire sur la CENI, sur la CI, comme le temps est limité. Je passe donc au misèlement de l'opposition et de la société civile ainsi que de la presse. Uh, I know we, we don't have much time. However, I'm going to come back to the CENI. That's the Independent uh, National uh, Electoral Committee. And uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, um, Independent and the Independent Electoral Committee, uh, because we don't have much more time. And then I will speak about it and how the opposition is being uh, uh, muzzled. Actuellement, l'opposition politique ne jouit plus des mêmes droits que les partis du pouvoir en place. Et pour cause, nous avons essayé de faire notre premier communiqué à l'endroit communément appelé GB, la concession GB de Bemba Père. Au moment où nous devrions nous présenter pour faire le communiqué, c'est un bataillon de la police qui nous accueillait, qui avait occupé les lieux. Et la deuxième fois, on avait payé tous les frais et on avait informé le gouverneur de la ville avec accusé de réception. Nous étions obligés de faire dans les couloirs des grands hôtels de Kinshasa où on avait couper l'électricité et fermer la salle que nous devrions occuper. Uh, 
What I'm saying, we have not the same rights with uh, the presidential political uh, party. Uh, what happened to us here, we were supposed to go to the GB, that's uh, a space which used to belong to Bemba's father. And when we wanted to go there, they sent the police force to block us to get in. So we decided to go to the In-N-Out uh, Intercontinental Hotel in Kinshasa. So they were able to influence the manager to go ahead and cut down the electricity. <laughs> so closed up the room, and we had to do a meeting on a hall. Mais nous avons fait les communiqués. However, we did uh, uh, provide our uh, announcement. Et il y a des actes d'intimidation et puis des actes évidemment de vandalisme puisque quand nous sommes descendus à Goma, ce sont les coups de feu qui nous ont accueillis à Goma, mais notre population à laquelle nous rendons hommage aujourd'hui est en train de vaincre la peur et vous pouvez les voir à travers quelques vidéos que j'ai amenées que je vais distribuer mais je n'ai pas beaucoup de moyens donc on distribuera on va commencer peut-être par les dames pour terminer par les hommes, on verra. On verra. There are certainly some acts of intimidation and vandalism. You will see that. As recently, we went to Goma, and uh, what happened was the intimidation, shooting by the police forces. And therefore, you will be seeing some videos that we brought. We will distribute them here. Uh, we will start with the ladies and whatever remains we can give to the men. Il y a la politisation de l'armée, de la police et des services de sécurité. L'armée, au lieu de défendre les territoires nationaux contre les envahisseurs extérieurs, au lieu de sécuriser l'est du Congo et le reste du Congo, la police, au lieu de maintenir l'ordre public et sécuriser les personnes et leurs biens, mais l'armée et la police et les services de sécurité sont là pour organiser une véritable chasse à l'homme contre les opposants. There is a great politisation of the army and the police. Army and police, instead of securizing uh, the people, taking care of the population, protecting uh, the, the borders of the, uh, of the country, right now the police and uh, the army have as objective to intimidate and uh, mistreat uh, the population. Il y a aussi la justice. Vous avez suivi dernièrement comment Edjen Djomindongala avait été interpellé et à moins d'une heure de temps, il a été condamné à trois ans de prison. L'honorable Moukonkole, en route pour aller déposer son enfant à l'école, on l'arrête, on le juge à partir de 23h et à minuit 5, il était condamné pour 10 mois de prison. Député national élu avec humilité. There is also the justice aspect, of the, the, the laws. What happened recently with Diomindongala, one of the uh, candidates who was uh, arrested and judged within an hour and uh, uh, he has got three years sentence of jail. And uh, also happened with uh, Mukon Kole, who had really not done anything at all. As he's, I he's an MP. Uh, he's an MP, a member of yes. par parliament, who uh, has been uh, arrested uh, for... He condemned at minuit cinq, uh, uh, he, was, uh, he was uh, at uh, midnight, five minutes, he was uh, a judge, and uh, he is taking uh, uh, ten months of... Uh, Bon, c'est bien de parler des autres. Parlons maintenant de l'opposition. Que fait l'opposition face à cette situation What is opposition doing Je on sais qu'il y aura beaucoup de questions, There'll donc be je vais être très bref, I'll be very brief pour réserver ma verve oratoire uh, just, uh, aux questions très musclées que je vois uh, déjà à travers uh, le visage. C'est ça qui fait le plaisir de la démocratie. Uh, that's what makes a democracy a great thing. Primo, l'opposition a réagi vigoureusement à cette all d'Alp constitutionnel. Uh, Nous avons rejeté la révision constitutionnelle. The opposition reacted uh, quickly, vigorously, and on that hold up, and we rejected the, that uh, uh, revision of the constitution. Nous avons déjà commencé le lobbying auprès de la communauté internationale et de notre peuple pour réveiller ce peuple à travers des pétitions, d'abord pour montrer sa désapprobation, mais aussi pour prévenir un autre mal, c'est-à-dire la loi Électoral. Puisque cette loi électorale, j'ai oublié de le dire, on ne veut pas seulement bouger au niveau de la présidentielle, mais aussi au niveau des législatives pour abandonner le mode proportionnel qui assurait une large représentation de nos ethnies et groupes sociologiques et partis politiques pour revenir à un mode où seuls les partis forts et les grandes ethnies vont être représentés. Ce qui est un drame et un recul. 
I don't think you don't mind if I ask him to start going back to some phases. So we probably got to go back a little bit. <laughs> Je voudrais dire ceci okay. que nous avons au niveau de l'opposition rejeté la révision constitutionnelle. The opposition rejected the constitutional revision. Et nous avons commencé un lobbying pour qu'on ne bouge pas les règles prévues dans la loi électorale, we surtout started, en ce qui concerne la proportionnelle. We started lobbying about the, revi uh, the, rev uh, the revision of the law, especially on the proportion uh, on, on the election aspect. Puisque la boulimie du pouvoir en place voudrait non seulement gagner la présidentielle, mais avoir une large victoire au niveau des législatives, exactement comme en Égypte. Uh, because what's happening is just like in Egypt, the power wants to, not only the presidential power, but they also want to occupy all the positions at the level of the National Assembly. Et donc, euh, nous allons, au niveau de l'opposition, aussi commencer la consolidation de notre unité. Start our unity. Vous me demanderez certainement pourquoi et je répondrai. Et comment and how? Pourquoi Parce que nous devons nous mettre en ordre de bataille. Why? Because we have to get ready for the battle. Si nous y allons en ordre dispersé, nous risquons de nous rentrer dedans nous-mêmes et nous anéantir. If we go on a, on, on a disorder, well, it's going to end up turning against us and then therefore losing everything. Quel est mon entendement pour cette réunification? Uh, what, uh, what I believe about this uh, uh, union? Je vais y revenir parce que il me reste plus que trois minutes. I'll come back on because I only have three minutes. En ce qui concerne la communauté internationale, In the national community, la réaction timide ou absente de la communauté internationale nous a étonné. The absence of the international community really surprised us. Parce que elle avait garanti et même contresigné l'accord global inclusif de Sun City. Because it guaranteed uh, the the accord that we signed in uh, Sun City. Mais nous saluons la réaction tardive de l'Union européenne. However, we grateful to the late uh, acceptances of the European Union. Qu'est-ce que nous attendons de la communauté internationale au moment où la Monisco va changer son mandat? What are we expecting from the international community when the, the UN forces will change its mandate? Nous en parlerons puisque vous allez soulever la question. We'll talk about it because you're going to question about it. En ce qui concerne ma candidature, concerning my uh, candidature, ce n'est pas un jeu d'essai erreur, non. It's not uh, just a trial. Ce n'est pas un acte de vengeance non plus. It's not vengeance. Ni de colère. No or, or um, uh, anger. Nous avons une vision pour le Congo. We have a vision for the Congo. On a un rêve pour le Congo. We have a dream for the Congo. Pour l'Afrique et pour le monde. Africa and the world. Et nous avons un programme. We have a program. Et nous avons un système d'instauration de leadership responsable. Uh, we can instaur a leadership uh, responsible leadership. Nous avons un plan de sortie de crise non seulement à l'est du Congo mais dans l'ensemble de la région des Grands Lacs. We have a plan to get out of the crisis not only on, uh, on the eastern side of the Congo but with the Great Lakes. With Dans ce plan, le volet militaire vient en appui d'autres volets. The army uh, 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 aspect of it will come on top of other aspects of things. Vient en appui. Et donc, nous we'll, privilégions d'abord le volet diplomatique. We first of all uh, uh, begin with the diplomatic aspect. Le volet politique. Political. Le volet économique, puisqu'il faut la traçabilité de tous ces minéraux à l'est du Congo. Because we have to chase up and find out all these minerals. Le volet humanitaire, parce qu'il faut que les populations aspect. déplacées reviennent dans and leur milieu d'origine. Because the population that has been removed out have to come back. To Le volet de la justice, homes. parce que nous nous voulons qu'on puisse instaurer une cour spéciale uniquement pour sanctionner tous ceux qui sont coupables de viols et de violences. Faites à la femme. C'est important qu'on puisse instaurer une cour spéciale. We have to install a special court, which that is a very, very important thing, which will chase up and find out all those who are raping women and the violence on the women in the country. Dans notre pays, nous avons l'habitude de jeter la pierre sur les magistrats et les juges en disant qu'ils sont corrompus. In our country, we always try to set up things by saying that the judges are corrupted. Moi, je vais me faire l'avocat des magistrats et des juges. Well, I'm going to defend those people. C'est tout le système qui est corrompu. The whole system is corrupted. Quels sont les moyens qu'on donne au pouvoir judiciaire pour fonctionner? How much is given to the judicial power to, to operate? C'est devenu un appendice du pouvoir exécutif. It's just like an appendix of the executive power. Nous devons réformer. We have to reform it. Et nous disons, notre plan comprend aussi le volet dit Développement. Our plan also has got a sector for the development. On a démobilisé les jeunes gens qui étaient dans les groupes armés à l'est. 
Mais ils ont caché les Kalachnikov. Mais s'ils ne sont pas utilisés dans les grands travaux, ils vont retourner dans les groupes armés. If they are not properly, they go back ce plan, com ce plan comprend aussi l'aspect de la coopération régionale. Uh, the plan also includes, uh, uh, regional cooperation. Et en fait, ce plan comprend l'option militaire. It includes, uh, military option. Nous allons parler de tout cela, madame. J'espère que les questions, quand elles seront posées, je vais y répondre. J'avais apprêté les textes en français et en anglais, mais en arrivant ici, j'ai vu que j'ai des petites erreurs là-dedans. Je vais les corriger. Demain, je mettrai à la disposition du centre pour donner à tous ceux qui s'intéressent au Congo, en commençant par nos compatriotes, que je ne peux pas oublier de saluer la présence dans cette salle. Ils sont venus nous écouter et nous allons donc remercier tous les autres qui sont venus, qui ne sont pas des Congolais. Ça montre l'intérêt que notre pays représente pour l'humanité. Je dis, madame, encore une fois, merci pour l'opportunité que vous m'avez offerte pour profiter de cette tribune prestigieuse et parler devant cet auditoire des têtes bien faites. Et je crois que nous en aurons pour notre compte avec les questions qui vont suivre. <rires> And also the audience here, and especially speaking in front of the Congolese audiences, and of course also everybody else who has come here. And I have uh, some documents here which we will distribute eventually later on because I went through it and saw some th things that have to be uh, modified a little bit. But uh, it's really a pleasure to be here, and uh, you are uh, to be, I'm honored to be in front of this uh, think tank. And uh, thank you again. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Kamari. Um, uh, just to let you know, we, we're webcasting this event, so it will be available online. And if you, we have written documents in French and English, we'll also post those along um, with the video. Um, uh, so those will all be available to the audience here. Let's turn to Mvemba for comments and response, and then on the way forward. Uh, thank you very much, um, and welcome, Honorable Vital Kamari. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you in town. Uh, I also have to let you know what you already know for sure, it's just how much passion and excitement you generate these days. Uh, when the invitation went out, I got a lot of emails and a lot of voicemails. Uh, one particular, uh, somebody called and left a voicemail on my answering machine and said, I'm calling you in all civility, but I have to say that I've forcefully disagree with what you're doing. This is the most ridiculous thing you can do to lend your name on a panel with Vital Kamari. Did you know that he's a Burundian? <laughs> so I didn't know what to do with this kind of message. So, so welcome to Washington, D.C. <laughs> um, so I would just like to talk a little briefly, I think in, in the interest of time, so we'll, let, we'll give you more time for your questions. I think more of the meat will come from there. Kind of just a bit of the context of what we're talking about when we talk about the road ahead. In 2006, I had an opportunity to be both a reporter uh, in Eastern Congo and throughout the country. I was embedded with UN troops in Ituri, uh, on Lake Albert, where we did a lot of patrol trying to intercept weapons that were coming from Uganda to the militias, and did a lot of patrol in South Kivu against the Inter Ahamwe and the FDLR with the Pakistani troops there. So I had a sense of that. I also had a chance to visit the Panzi Hospital, actually to see this woman who had been raped, get a sense of uh, that calamity that is taking place in our country. I was also able to follow a candidate on the campaign trail in Bakongo, who was running for uh, a deputation as an MP. <coughs> Later on in the same year, I was back in the second round of the elections as an observer with the Carter Center and was posted in Bandaka in Jean-Pierre Bemba's territory. So I had the sense of what's happening from various perspectives. And since then, I've been back uh, several times. 2006 was a year of a lot of hope. You know, people used to think it was the first election that Congo had organized, but actually it was not because the last election were organized in 65. Um, these are the elections that eventually led to the coup uh, that brought Mobutu to power. Those elections were deemed fair in, 2000, in 1965. So this is to say that there is actually a tradition of fair elections even in Congo. 
You know, from 60 to 65, the Congolese ran their own elections. There were no international observers, right? Uh, when I arrived in, uh, in 2006 for the, uh, the observation, I called a friend's father, uh, and he asked me, why are you here? I said, I'm here to observe the elections. He said, oh, why do you always do these kind of things? You know, it's, it's a moot exercise. I can always tell you what the result will be and what your official statement will be. And he said, if you want, I can tell you now, or you can discuss it after a month when you finish your observation. I said, just tell me now. He said, well, the Carter Center will say, in spite of all the irregularities, the system was pretty much functional. It worked well. <laughs> and um, four weeks later, the frustration actually reflected what he had said, that even as an observer, we spent a lot of time uh, you know, an observer is like an investigative reporter. So you spend a lot of time, in the case of the DRC, with all the various parties, most of them didn't know what they were doing, uh, except just blaming the others. Uh, so there's a lot of accusations and allegations that as, a, as an investigator, as an observer, you have to go dig out and find. So we end up spending a lot of time in the equatorial forest with the pygmies, because everybody was saying the pygmies were not registered to vote, you know, just to give you an example. It turned out that was bogus. I remember some accusations and uh, went to going to investigate uh, the national police. And when I arrived, um, my partner was American, so went to the police. They called the general. They told them these observers are here and this is what's happening. And the guy who was doing intelligence for the police spoke in Swahili. <laughs> so he told the general in Swahili. And with my American passport, Somehow they thought I couldn't understand what was going on. So it was due to a lot of BS being narrated. So I kept my mouth shut, we were able to do the report. At the end, these reports never were used, right? Nevertheless, we had an election that uh, legitimized President Joseph Kabila, who became a president, and there was a lot of hope, particularly in the parliament. So we were able to follow that parliament pretty closely. And um, we were able to follow uh, Vital Kamere uh, as a... Uh, the president very closely. The parliament gave a lot of hope because in the case of the DRC where there is not a strong history of political parties, there was not a lot of a strong history of transparent parliamentary work, um, the openness with which the National Assembly ran for those few months was pretty refreshing. So all the debates were televised the opposition leaders and deputies and MPs were allowed to bring forth their bills. So I think when you look at um, Congo, most people talk about the, uh, uh, the overwhelming uh, level of problems that Congo may have. But for once, there was an element of hope, right? So you had the review of a mining contract with China. You had a lot of hearings. You had... Uh, all these things being televised so that even there were reports that even though he had come from the IMP, the presidential coalition, uh, his people were not very happy. The rest of the country was happy because that these things are working. Um, but the challenge then became, even though these things were happening and it was televised, they never actually led to anywhere, right? So if we had hearings, then what happened after the hearing? So does it become just a moot exercise in the sense people are doing things because it feels good? And on the form level, it's great, but the, the form, the substance is lacking. So we had about two years of this period where uh, interpellation after interpellation, hearing after hearing, minister came through, but nothing really happened. But at the same time, it gave a certain momentum because this is where we saw, for instance, with the Chinese, the Chinese mining uh, contract. Some review were pushed, but again, didn't go very far. After the uh, Bundu Dia Congo uh, protestation and manifestation and revolt took place in Bakongo, uh, the Minister of the Interior at the time thought he could just go to Kong to the parliament and bulldoze his way through and get some result in favor of the government. But unfortunately for him, th there was certain op openness in parliament which allowed the leader of that party, uh, the BDK, to rebut the Minister of uh, Interior. So he was able to unravel the Minister's argument because there was a certain openness. And I think this actually led to the undoing of the Minister himself because when the Remanima took place after that, he was out. 
Um, so moving on to the next level, um, and that is what do we do then with the opposition when the government is so bent, or should I say the IMP is so bent on taking the lion's share and not even leaving crumbles for the rest of the, uh, the electorate or the people in the system? Right. Here's the challenge. If you take any African country, and this is just a, a rhetorical question, take Angola. If I ask you to, to, name me, to name any opposition leader in Angola, most of you will be hard pressed to give me a name of an opposition leader in Angola. That will be the same for Namibia. This will be the same for Botswana. And this uh, Botswana and Namibia country that are fairly organized, but you don't know them. If I ask you to name two names for the opposition leader in, in Congo, you will name a few. So it's, it's uh, it, to show just the contrast how Congo is between two others. It's chaotic, but it's not always that chaotic. There is room, actually. The things that are happening, uh, they may be uh, happening in place, but things are actually moving. So it's not purely a mirage in that sense. Um, you have Chisekedi, you have UDPS, Chisekedi being the father of the democratic, the modern democratic movement in Congo. So if you analyze him, he is a guy who had a lot of courage to break out from, uh, from Obutu and start this great movement. Now, for whatever reason, uh, he's never been able to capitalize on, uh, on the various opportunities that came along the way. I don't know why, that's a UDPS to respond. But the UDPS nevertheless have a strong structure that makes it possible if some conditions were put together for them actually to challenge the power in place today. Right. So on the other level, you had people like Jean-Pierre Bemba, who also came to, to illustrate the other side of the coin. So former rebel, but very rich. And because he was rich, because he had a structure of his own, he could do what the other parties cannot do. Right? So Sisekedi has a structure in terms of population and followers. But Sisekedi doesn't have money. The UDPS does not have money. <laughs> the UDPS does not have a radio. In a system where a government owns the media, the government owns the security forces and everything else, uh, and is actually, the government is actually greedy, and by government I mean the AMP, it's hard to operate in that system, right? So UDPS will never get airtime. Uh, but if you have your own radio station and your own TV stations, then you can do that. So Bemba was able to emerge in part because of this. Right? There were frustration against the power in place, but there was also possibilities that he was able to capitalize on. And of course, the result we saw between the two rounds of the election, that his station were looted, burned, and so on and so forth. So when we have um, a new party that is born, the UNC with Kamere, what does that mean? So this actually raises the new questions. Does the UNC and the other parties that will emerge in the process going forward have any structure? Right. So it's going to be, or is this going to be another exercise, as we saw in while you were the head of the parliament? Goodwill, popularity on the rise, but in the end, does it lead anywhere? Right. So um, do you have? Followers, uh, I think there's a lot of frustration. Are you going to try to fill the void that Bemba left? And in that case, um, gain the popularity and the Moana Congo and all the other stuff that comes with it, the momentum. But still, when it comes to it, you will not be able to deliver because the structure, again, is not there. Right. Uh, it, because of the diaspora in the room, there is an element that has been very frustrating to your fellow Congolese around the world. And that is in the moratorium on citizenship. So in 2006, the Congolese overseas were very much eager to contribute, that is to vote. For whatever reason, the system made it impossible for them to vote, for very various reasons with which you're very familiar. But then we found out quickly that once you were sworn in, that parliament, about 150 of you had foreign passport. So as they had foreign passport, you as the principal of the parliament, uh, I don't know what happened, so this will be a chance for, for you to explain to your fellow Congolese, decided not to kick these people out of parliament, as the law will dictate, 
but instead to do something we've never seen in anywhere in the world, to pass a moratorium on the law on citizenship. And that moratorium is still in place. 